are the businesses of the future? The answer to that may depend on who you ask, but it's clear that in a globalized and ever competitive world, countries and businesses need that something extra to get on top. For Caribbean countries, that means moving away from simply exporting raw agricultural products such as unprocessed sugar and bananas, which have been the mainstay of our economies for centuries. The world is not about brute labor anymore. The winners in the new economy are the countries with the smartest people, knowledge-based economies, innovation-driven and highly creative. These are the areas listed in this year's Global Entrepreneurship Monitor called the GEM Report. The author of the Jamaican GEM Report is Dr. Gertinoff Budraj, a lecturer of economics and statistics at the University of Technology, UTEC. According to Dr. Budraj, Jamaica is not doing so well in creating and attracting these types of businesses. What we need more though, Ms. Enriquez, is high growth businesses. Ones which can stay for a long of period, period of time, not just one year and then discontinue especially in the context of Jamaica. In January of, of this year, the unemployment rate was 14%. And it is, it is known by, by most students now that it's very difficult to get a job. Therefore, we need companies, entrepreneurs, who could start up businesses that can generate jobs. There is a term used by GEM called in relating to this job factor called high growth firms. The high growth firms are defined as those which over the next five years will generate 20 or more jobs. And in Jamaica, what we found that hardly any, in fact, no, none of the entrepreneurs that we interviewed stated that they expect to get more than 20 employees. It's now become important to add value to these products and differentiate ourselves from the pack. For example, not just selling bananas, but also producing and exporting banana chips. You refer to these high growth industries, industries that can grow after a few years and begin employing more people. What are some of those industries where these opportunities exist? If we process our agricultural products and add value to it and export it, then it will, it will not be categorized as a primary export. Take bauxite, for instance. We export our bauxite, we make alumina, export it, but we don't go on to, to create components or parts uh, that can be used in, in manufacturing products. Now, these countries that import our, our bauxite take it make casings for cell phones, not speaking of building planes, but they, they create a whole lot of products with it, whereas we focus on the lower level in the value-added chain. At the recent G. Arthur Brown lecture hosted by the Bank of Jamaica, Jamaica's former Prime Minister P.J. Patterson made the case for the creative industries. Innovation doesn't just mean technology-based, it means coming up with something new and creative. According to Patterson, the creative industries are worth an estimated 600 billion U.S. dollars and are among the fastest growing industries, expanding some 14 percent between 2002 and 2008. The report shows the creative sector was valued at 29 billion J dollars and contributed 4.81 percent of Jamaica's GDP in 2007 and 3.3% of its employment, which compared favorably with other national sectors, such as manufacturing. I believe that the creative industries offer Jamaica and the larger Caribbean feasible options and new opportunities to leapfrog into emerging high growth areas of the world economy. We can do so through a number of steps. Developing and showcasing to the world distinctive cultural content that is indigenous to Jamaica and the wider Caribbean. One small business that fits the bill is the five-year-old company Crystal Clear Productions. We are an audio, video, and multimedia production company. Um, so anything really along that line, we do it. We don't stick directly because we find that our, our clients have different 
we need to cater directly to their needs and so we have to tweak every different aspect of our production company to ensure that we meet the client's needs. Crystal Clare was one of the finalists in this year's entrepreneurial challenge hosted by UTEC, Scotiabank and Nationwide. I started out with my client, my, my long-standing client Arden. Um, they knew of my, my, my abilities because even so I used to help out even with the school pay and they saw that they had a need as there to assist them with it. And then you do small jobs and what you do is because I was in school, I'd end up investing back. So, okay, if it's a $5,000 yarn, you save it after three jobs, I could buy one other piece of equipment because I didn't have the expenditure, the consistent monthly expenses, stuff like that to maintain so I could easily invest back in the business. So, um, I guess that's where I'd say, but right now where we are today, which is very important is that outside of just starting with audio, we added video. It's a clear sign that the company is growing, even in a very competitive industry. But it's that very competition that forced Crystal Clear to look to other opportunities within the industry. We, we found that the nature of the business is, is very cyclical. And therefore, we had to provide, the company has to provide different areas within itself that could fill the financial gap when it was needed. So you'd find that um, there are certain times a year where video production is very low, where audio production is very low. And then the combination of it is that you also have the multimedia. So part of our, our, our entrepreneurship um, growth is that we've been able to maximize as much as possible. Of course, there have been challenges. Um, to maximize on how to fill a gap when the time arose. So for example, we in in building a business we developed a product called Hidden Treasures, um, which is a local travel idea. Um, we ran it for two seasons on TVJ. So hopefully next time I can say I ran it on scene. Um, but we ran the season successfully for two years for which because of different different circumstances we had to put a hold on it um, but it was loved by all and enjoyed so don't worry the good thing is that even though hidden treasures and people are asking about it is that um we have something else coming out so look out for it people say that in this industry in media there's really no money in production in producing programs in advertising or at least in soliciting advertising yet you've decided to go this route has that been successful for you? For you to be described as an entrepreneur, part of it is you have to understand, or even just a general business person, you have to spend money to make money. Um, and you have to calculate what your, your initial investment will be and how long it will take you to make that back. Um, Hidden Treasures has proven to, to, be, to fill a, a very needy gap for us. A very, very needy gap when we stopped waiting on people to call but had to decide that we were going to make money for ourselves or even attempt to make money because that's that's what it really was especially in first season um, attempt to make the money um, so therefore it is a challenge but it was i think rewarding in different aspects it, it allowed for um, greater investment um, it allowed for greater recognition, it allowed me to hire more people. So it, 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 it turned around to be just a, a, a better or a more viable option um, before hidden treasures possibly. We're a small crew, um, full time, only about five persons, but when we go out on shoots, maybe up to about 15, 15, 20. So it, it, it ranges. Um, and therefore, it, we need it also to find employment for other people too. Over the past five years of being in business, what would you say has been the biggest challenge you've encountered? As a limited liability company, the biggest challenge um, has been our capital base. Um, the ability to compete with bigger firms which um, have ease of access to funding and grants and um, other maybe benefits from financial institutions simply as in possibly if it's an overdraft or um, some other 
facility, which makes it a little bit easier for them to invest. Very big challenge of ours is um, the heavy burden of taxation. Um, as a limited liability company, you tax that source and then you tax on your profits, you tax, you're, you're taxed. Um, we understand the, the role of taxation, but in terms of it stifles organizations who have very limited cash and their, abil and their ability to, to make it liquid. Uh, where do you see Crystal Clear Productions going in the next year or two? Look out for a very interesting and intriguing program uh, within the next year. I would not even say within the next year, within the next four to six months. We have already done the groundwork. Things are in motion and um, look out for good local programming. Now, Smith won't let us show you what Crystal Clear has up its sleeve, but from what we've seen, we can tell you it's quite impressive. And with innovative and creative products like that, why stop at Jamaica? If we have firms producing innovative products, the market should not be limited to Jamaica. We have a large diaspora.